to, I had the opportunity, the, uh, some of you guys might have seen it in the paper, I've already been in a big discussion at our table about the SU-30 MKI, MKI stands for, uh, I is for Indian, the MK is the Russian designation for, uh, it was the SU-30M, that's the Russian designation for their newest fighter, the K means it's an export version, and I means it's for the Indians. These were version 5 airplanes, they had vector thrust, uh, canards, they had uh, all the advanced weapons that the, the Russians built to include the uh, Amramsky, if you will, their active radar missile, uh, and then their uh, 10 Delta, which is a IR missile that has a 30 mile range on it. Uh, that's out of Jane's magazine. Uh, trust me, I won't say anything classified. Everything I tell you, you can read in Jane's about these airplanes. Uh, and we, uh, we had them here. We also had them up at Mountain Home for two weeks where we trained with them to teach them how to fly out of red flag. And a couple of things happened there. First off, we realized the Tomansky engines that are in those airplanes are uh, very susceptible to fog and foreign object damage. Now, the reason that's a big deal is they have to take one minute spacing for takeoff. Well, in a red flag where we're launching, uh, you know, 60 to 80 airplanes, if you got somebody that's going to get out there and take you know, one minute between airplanes to launch six airplanes, you go, yeah, right, go find someplace else to fly. Uh, so we trained with them and we, we worked with them and, and got them to shorten that down to about 45 seconds. Still not acceptable, but what we did is we said, okay, you're going to launch the first guys out and we're going to send you out to the airspace and you can hold and wait for everybody else because they did carry a lot of gas and they could do that. And that's, that's what they did. They were very concerned about FOD and the, uh, the fact that the Russian engines are, uh, are not nearly as reliable as, uh, as Americans. One of the things the Indians were very disappointed in is when they fought an engine out, the Russians make them send the engine back to Russia and then they'll send them a new one. And they do all the work themselves back in Russia on the engine. So, uh, not, not the perfect situation for them being here in the United States with no spare engines. Um, how do they fly? Well, I, I think the best way to describe it is give you some uh, stuff, because I know there was something in the newspaper, I guess, today, and I didn't see it, but there was a lot of stuff in a lot of the aviation journals, and there's going to be a whole lot more about this airplane, about how good it is. If, if you like to go on the computer and look at YouTube, there's a great demo that somebody's put together where they take the F-22 Raptor, and they show it flying its demonstration, and then they have the demo pilot for the SU-30 MK, do its demonstration, and it does the same exact demonstration as the F-22. Uh, and in an air show, they can do the same demonstration. The reality is, that's about as close as the airplanes ever get. When you when you compare it to U.S. airplanes, um, where does it stand up against the F-16 and the F-15? It's a tad bit better than we are. Um, and that's pretty impressive. It has a better radar, it has uh, more thrust, and it's, uh, um, it's got vector thrust, it's got uh, longer range weapons, so it's pretty impressive. Now, the one thing you have to add into that is training. Well, let me throw in the F-22. It's up here. Okay, next. Um, maneuvering. 1v1 fighting. We had the opportunity to do a lot of 1v1 fighting with it. And we were very concerned because in Cope, India, where we went over to India and fought them, they always had their best pilots. We always fought them at their Nellis, and they always had their best pilots flying it. We always had an operational unity there at a Kadena or Misawa where the experience ratio, there was 80% inexperienced guys, less than 500 hours flying time, and 20% experience. That 20% experience was normally guys that had been on staff jobs and come back, so they really hadn't had a lot of time flying. And they went over there, and we, we kind of held their own, but the Indians pounded their chest and said, look, we were able to beat them more than they beat us. And that was true over there. Well, they come to Mountain Home and they brought a regular operational SU-30 unit with an experience level of about 50-50. Um, and their experienced guys all came out of the MiG-21 Bison. The MiG-21 Bison is an, a pretty neat airplane. It's a MiG-21 that a lot of you guys remember from the Vietnam era except for that they put F-16 radar built by the Israelis in the nose, and they carry the active radar missile, and then they carry an Israeli jammer on it that makes them practically invisible to our legacy 
And when I say legacy, I'm talking fondly about the F-15 and F-16 radar. Um, and if you remember the days of the 4477th and we had Gail Peck and uh, those guys talk to us about the 4477th, the MiG-21 had the capability to get in the scissors with you and at 110 knots at uh, 60 degrees nose high, go from 10,000 to 20,000 feet. Very maneuverable airplane, but it did have a lot of good weapons. Well, now it has a helmet with the high off foresight archer, it has an active radar missile, and it has a jammer, which gets it to the merge. So that's where their experienced pilots came out of to the SU-30, and they felt that they were pretty good in the engaged fight. Well, they get up to Mountain Home, and we show up there, and we didn't really weigh it too much. We let the operational guys fight, but then a couple of the patchware and IPs went out and played some too with it. And uh, amazingly, we dominated. And we dominated not with a clean F-15, i.e. no wing tanks or any of that. We dominated with an F-15 and wartime configuration, i.e. four missiles on board, uh, wing tanks on board. Now the gas was out of the wing tanks, and they're sitting there in their SU-30s that are clean except for um, the, a pylon that didn't have anything on it to carry an ACMI pod. Uh, they were amazed. They, matter of fact, they were floored to the point after the first three days, they said, you know what, we don't need to do any more of this 1v1 stuff. <laughs> Let's move on to something else. And we were, we were amazed because in India, they wanted to do nothing but 1v1 because they were winning in that. Uh, real quick on their airplane, vector thrust. And the Raptor that has a vector thrust, it's two-dimensional, but it works in the pitch mode. So when the airplane pulls, the, and it gets past a certain uh, AOA, it, it's not an airspeed, it's an AOA limit, post-stall maneuvering, then the vector thrust kicks in and it drives the airplane around. In the SU-30, what it has, instead of having two-dimensional in the pitch, they have it on a V. So if you're looking at the, the rear end of the airplane, the thrust moves like this. And what that does is when they get, and they don't necessarily have to be post-stall maneuvering, they hit a switch on the stick and it kicks in vector thrust. So if the airplane's in a, in, a, uh, in a scissors and he wants to go right, instead of kicking rudder, he kicks in the vector thrust and he puts the stick right and it takes the nozzle, since they're on a V, and it puts it over here and it pushes the airplane around. Now, while that sounds really good and it's great for a lot of thrust, what it does is it creates massive drag. It's a big airplane, a huge airplane. And now it's just taking it and moving it across the sky. So what happens is, while it can move its nose around, it starts sinking. Well, what do we do? Well, we've been fighting the Raptor, getting our butts kicked, and we go, you know, the only chance you have against the Raptor is when he's in a turn and he's coming around the corner and you have an inexperienced guy, because the experienced guys know not to get there, but the inexperienced guy has got, and this is no shit, 28 degrees per second turn rate at 20,000 feet. The F-15 has an instantaneous of 21, a sustained of about 15 to 16 degrees. The Raptor can sustain 28 degrees. Some of these young guys, that's not enough for them. They want more than that. So they'll come around the corner, and, and here you are in your ego, just kind of hoping that he gets scared. You're pointing your nose out here, and he pulls to the point that he goes post-stall maneuvering. Well, once he goes post-stall, the airplane stops moving around the center of lift on the wing, and it goes around the center of gravity up by the nose, because it goes on just thrust, and the ass end drops down, and the airplane will rotate like this. Well, in the Eagle or the Viper, when you see that, you immediately go vertical, because you know he's not going to be able to go up with it. And you have one fleeting opportunity against the Raptor, and that's it. Now, the real key is, you never even get that close to the Raptor, because you never see him, and he shoots you before you get there. The SU-30, no problem. Big airplane, big radar cross-section, He's jinking and jiving just to get to the merge, but he's jamming. So yeah, your missiles aren't working, so you get to this visual fight. Well, you roll in on him, and he's got about 22 degrees, 23 degrees per second sustained turn. Nowhere near the Raptor. Well, we've been fighting the Raptor, so we go, yeah, okay, oh, dude, this is easy. So we start to pull in on him, and then all of a sudden you see the ass in kick down, and he starts doing vector thrust, but now he starts falling out of the sky. He's falling out of the sky so fast that you don't even have to go up. You just pull the stick back a little bit, pull the throttles, go to guns, and come in and drill his brains out. And so the, the, uh, 